Okay, and welcome back. What we've got here, this is what I'm going to be calling my winter project. If um, anybody doesn't know right off hand what it is, this is a Great Dane Super Surfer. This is a 52 inch, and it was my primary mower about uh, three mowers ago. And um, as you can see, it is parked at the moment, and it's not running at the moment but it's got some promise and I think this is what I'm going to be doing this winter is getting this back up and going and now um, for anybody who's never heard of the Great Dane or the Super Surfer uh, let me just explain a little bit as you know I am a skag guy and you're thinking well this isn't a skag what were you doing actually this is a skag this is made by skag not skag the company but by the founder of skag Dane Skag, thus the Great Dane in Great Dane is Dane Skag, and um, unfortunately he just died um, a couple years ago. But um, this was the latest uh, company that he had founded. He founded Skag. He founded Bobcat, and um, uh, he has he had sold them all by the time he died. But uh, and Great Dane itself is no longer in business. So it will be a challenge to hunt down some parts, but not that hard, really. This is from around, hmm, I don't know what year. I'm thinking somewhere around 2000, roughly, very roughly, because I can't remember. But I'm going to show you around it, uh, tell you um, what, uh, what has happened to it and what I'm going to do with it. So let's start with... Um, the engine. There we go. Now this engine is a new engine, believe it or not. When I bought the Cheetah, um, this thing had, like instantly, so the moment I bought the Cheetah, this was running. I had three mowers going, three big ones. I had the Cheetah, and I had a uh, Wright Centaur 52, and I had this one, was running just fine. And uh, almost instantly, when I bought the Cheetah, this one blew its motor. And it was a Kawasaki 23. And, um, and it blew its motor just a bit prematurely. It blew both heads. And uh, at about... Let's see what this... Let's see here. Very, very prematurely. As you can see, there are 1,500 hours. 15, almost 1,600 and um, the new engine is hooked up to that hour meter um, and unfortunately I only have about 50 hours on this engine so this engine is still brand brand new and that is a Briggs let's see here Briggs 27 so I replaced the 23 with the 27 there's a lizard right there did not come with the engine but um, this was, when I was using it, just a little bit, um, it was noticeably stronger than the 23 was, which is, I mean, the 23 was strong enough, so this is kind of overpowered now, which I like. Uh, this engine is a very good engine. It was much cheaper than the Kawasaki was going to be. The Kawasaki was going to be about, oh, 2,500 installed, and this one was 1,100 installed for more horsepower and being in an old mower if it was a brand new mower somehow um, I would have put a Kawasaki on there but old mower I figure it would be a good one to test the theory on a Briggs commercial engine and uh, so far uh, it worked fantastically well it will not start up right now but it will start uh, the battery has gone bad and I'm pretty sure that the regulator the uh, relay is also bad but we'll see see if I can pop that open and clean it up um, but the good news is the uh, the pumps and the motors work perfectly uh, the deck is in great shape um, the spindles are all good it does have mamba mulching blades on it the tires are in great shape and um, nothing leaks I had just let me go back here this is kinda how these things work this used to have a big pad right here 
but it um, decayed and fell off. I had just put all new lines on here. These hydro lines were leaking and I put these new ones on and now it's tight. Um, the wheel motors used to have covers on them but I took them off so that I could I, I take all covers off so that I can clean these things properly even with the blower um, to get in there and get all that stuff off of there so there's not a lot of grass build up and heat build up um, and uh, this is just a look at it uh, there's your deck where you stand it's really really wide and there are springs on that deck you can see them right there And that all works perfectly. It's been great. Um, there's some controversy on whether or not Skag invented the stander because kind of the right stander came out about the same time that this came out. And I just don't know. I'm not going to say anything one way or the other. But it was definitely one of the originals, which makes this kind of a classic and definitely worth um, restoring. Uh, okay, now on to... Okay, let me look in here. I can remember what kind of blades I have in there. What do we have? Yeah, we got... We got mulching blades on there. And it mulches fantastically well. I remember that clearly. Now the deck, at one point, I had everything off the deck because it was rusting. I took everything off the deck and painted it with that Rust-Oleum hammered finish, and it is holding. It is not rusting. I put a ton of it on there, and uh, as I remember, all this is working perfectly. Now, the problems. Okay, let's get on to the problems. The things I'm going to have to hunt down. Now, the front forks here, the yokes there that go up into that shaft, the shaft that goes up into that hole from here to here. Um, that yoke itself is worn, so even replacing the bushings isn't going to solve that problem. So I need to hunt down two front forks because they're both worn like that. Um, but the, the bearings inside the wheels are fine and the tires are fine. Yeah, so that's that. As I said, the hydro pumps and the hydro motors turn fine, but there is a problem. The main thing that parked it was, I think it was on this wheel. The way these things work, right there in the middle, if I had this off, there is a shaft coming out of the wheel motor, and then there's a hub on the wheel. And there's a thing called a keyway that um, holds a key. It's hard to explain. So there's a shaft in in well there's a there's a groove in the shaft and there's a groove in the hub and the, there's a key in there that's basically just a rectangular piece of metal that makes up the difference and that's what makes your wheel turn when your wheel motor turns. And that is made out of a metal that's softer than the shaft on purpose and softer than the hub on purpose so that if it were to start to wear, it would um, wear out the key before it wears out the shaft. But what happened, um, somehow, that when that was, uh, the key was wearing out and it uh, demolished the hub and demolished the, the groove in the shaft coming out of the wheel motor. Now is that's the big problem. Easy enough to replace the hub, but to replace the shaft out of the wheel motor is another story. As far as I can tell, all you can do is replace the whole wheel motor, and I really don't want to do that. And so at the time, when that happened, so basically you can engage the left one and, and you go, engage the right one and nothing happens. The wheel motor's spinning, but the the hub won't catch. And at the time I had two mowers. I had just gotten the cheetah 
and I had the right centaur working perfectly so I didn't really really need this one so I parked it right here and uh, that was a year and a half ago and it's still here and I feel really bad about that because the motor is brand new but you know a little bit at a time I'll just kind of hunt down some parts and work on that this winter and I'll have this thing back in action because I'm positive I'm gonna be the only one around here running one of these and it's definitely worth uh, getting it back in uh, working order kind of like restoring an old hot rod so I'm looking forward to doing that and that's just a look at Great Dane Super Surfer if you've never seen one never heard of one that's what it looks like so appreciate y'all watching have a good one